So the GPTs are live, which is exciting. You can go into the GPT store if you have a chat GPT professional license and you can find GPTs that really work well for whatever you need to do. Now there's this category research and analysis, which is nice, where you can find some of the most popular GPTs for researchers. One of the ones that I like specifically this weekend is Scholar AI. They're running a free promotion throughout the weekend where they're letting you use the full capacities of the tool for the entire weekend. So something definitely for you to try out and see what it does. It now has generative mode. So this is quite interesting because it can help you generate new hypotheses, just like it says. It can have, help you analyze text, figures and tables and so forth from books. So here's some example prompts that it gives you right away. Now, one of the things that I like to do when I start using some of these AI tools is I'd like to check out how they can help me get an overview of a field of literature. So let's say, can you write related work section for my paper on gamification and personalization. What are the main research trends in the last, let's say five years? Once you're done providing this overview, give me an analysis of the current research gaps. That could be fun. Let's see. It's not bad. Took a little while. Good thing we can speed things up. But yeah, if we look at it, it identified some recent trends there. And I'm pretty happy that some of our Hexad stuff is in there even twice, at least with a mention. So that's really cool, exciting, lots of recent trends there where things can go. And then look at this current research gap, lack of consensus and effectiveness. I can definitely agree with that. Context specific applications. That is also something that I would probably have gone in terms of a direction with my own research. Demographic variability is something that usually you can always find long term effects for any kind of gaming studies that's hard to come by. Personalization and standardization, those are a little bit harder to do in papers, tech integration and ethical considerations. So really nice to see those jumping points for the papers that you can then create. Now let's try something else. Since we have all the links to the papers, let's click on one of the papers. And then what we get is usually the paper and in the papers, we always get this DOI link. So once we have that paper, we can go back all the way back here, describe the experimental design in this paper. Boom. Let's try and find an open access paper and see if we can see what was done in that paper. Now this is a literature review, so it might not work. Let's find out. That was actually not bad. What it did here is it did still break down the method from the paper. And it is quite interesting, albeit a little bit superficial, but it is a nice way to find out at least the papers that are open access to find out what it is that they are doing. There's obviously way more things that you can do with Scholar AI, such as now generate a study design that follows this systematic literature review, but is planning to investigate gamification and personalization. Let's see what that does. Now, this was really nice. So obviously it read the original paper and it's not just a generic literature review. Starts here with defining the research questions, then goes into inclusion and exclusion criteria. And again, orients itself based on the paper that we were just querying before. And now you can even see it has a literature search strategy here that actually includes similar databases to the ones that we'd be looking at. And it even gives you some of the keywords. Now, obviously they would need some fine tuning but wow, what a great start. If you're a student and you're just getting started with some of this, this is a really nice way to limit your literature search strategy. Then it even talks about data extraction, like what kind of data should you be looking for when you're doing this literature review? And then it even took the quality assessment that we had in there and it added our quality assessment tools. Now that's pretty cool because a lot of literature reviews don't do a proper quality assessment after the fact. So I'm pretty impressed here by the functionality. And then it talks about the data synthesis analysis and what what else needs to be done and how to report all of this and even how to do the reflexive thematic analysis if you choose to do so and what kind of ethics to consider. So it's a really nice first draft of a study design. I'm impressed with the functionalities of just getting started with your research here. I'm going to keep exploring this for the weekend and see what else it has, but good job Scholar AI. I'm quite impressed with the first things that we can see here in the tool. I hope you find this useful. Let me know. Maybe like it or repost it. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.